I mean, honestly, I think Cleric's pretty reasonable in a lot of different places. All right, Captive Grixis. Um, this is like barely... This is like barely... Um, barely Grixis. So this is basically a, a blue-black with a small red splash for Captive audience at the top. Um, someone just asked, has this been good anytime we've played it? It really hasn't. Um, we're going to give it another try here. One of the things we've talked about, whether or not it's Captive Audience or Divine Visitation or just all of these powerful enchantments in this format, there are, enchantment is a very targeted card type in this format. So trying to play a finisher that's an enchantment is a little bit of a liability. You'll note here, in addition to Captive Audience, I've got four copies of Night Veil vale Predator in my deck. And this is a card that, this is a threat answer split card. So a 3-3 uh, Death Touch Hexproof Flyer is essentially a removal spell that's able to that's able to block and stuff stuff along that line. And it can also close games out because it's difficult to interact with. One of the things that's nice about Night Veil vale Predator is that because it's the only creature in our deck, we're not turning on our opponent's removal spells by we're not turning on our opponent's removal spells by playing this card. So this is a card that it's pressure, it block doubles as a blocker, but it also doesn't make like their otherwise like dead lava coils active, like something like Nickel Bolas would or other other creatures would in our deck. So generally, generally speaking, playing a very small selection of creatures is not something that you want to do. You want to either have enough creatures that you have a variety to play through the removal spells, or you want to have basically none at all, so you're not turning on the couple that they draw. You generate what's called virtual card advantage by blanking your opponent's removal spells by playing a few creatures, or creatures that can't be targeted. Easy mulligan. It's fine. I'm gonna bottom that for now. Don't don't want our seven drop till we're ready to win the game. Squire's end. Thanks for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Did I forget to update Stream Decker? I totally did. Thank you. All right, so they're playing Esper Control, so they're going to take one of these three cards. We've got two dead cards in our hand, because again, Esper Control has that same virtual card advantage that we do by the virtue of not playing creatures. I'm going to go ahead and jam into their thoughts here. Did I remove the Angraths? There's Angraths in the sideboard. This was a build around submission, right, Dr. Grindle? Am I, did I completely mess up? I, I, I thought this was a build around submission and I started from scratch. Did you send in an actual deck? God, that's brutal. Did you send in an actual deck list that I was supposed to be playing to start? I'll have to check once I get done here, I guess. Hey, Squirey Sand. Thanks for the, thanks for the two month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. All right, we're dead. Keep this isn't a fight you can win. So cut, cut all of our mopey creature removal, bring in a bunch of, bunch of reasonable top end here. I like leaving in a couple of these because they can pressure their Tefri okay. Ratman, thanks for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around.
Black Thieves as well. That's a good call. I conceded because my opponent had a Vraska's Contempt and I had four cards in my hand that didn't have text boxes. What's going on, 2-Drop? Thanks for the seven months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. In a tournament, I would play that out. Not necessarily, Dallas. In a tournament, and this is something that why a lot of control players draw, because they're not cognizant of this. In a tournament, you have a shared clock. And conceding matches, conceding games where you are likely to lose because you need time to actually play three games in your match is a big deal and a real thing. There are a lot of people who fail to concede matches that they should be and they're going to draw because of it. So going on, Dibbles? Thanks for the three-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, I led with Erasure because I wanted to take something like a Tefri out of their hand if they had it. And once they... Sticking Search for Azkanta is not guaranteed to have it do anything in this matchup because my opponent has four copies of Mortify in their deck. Wanna try and hit a land drop here? It's not a bad hit. The mana advantage from these treasures could be meaningful here for sure. Take their Eldest Reborn. I think, I think I just let this happen and then I Eldest Reborn them. I know my responsibility. Hurry. I guess if they draw a land tier, I guess if they draw a land tier, they like negate me. And then play. Yeah, I guess this was wrong. Maybe I'm supposed to stroke the Tefri. Maybe I'm just supposed to stroke the Tefri here. Yeah, I guess the sequencing puts me into a bad spot. They can go Karn plus Mortify here. Although Karn plus Mortify is not that big of a deal because then I get to play my own Planeswalker and hold Stroke up. Maybe keeping the Angrath was wrong just because I kind of wanted another land. Oh, they can Tefri untap plus Mortify. Yeah, they totally can. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, think I picked the wrong fight. All right, well, they didn't do that, so God bless. You're saying, so you're saying there's a chance. Alrighty then. Huh. I think I want to get Rail ulting ASAP. Negate. Yep. Yikes. That's, that's a little 
rough. Little rough. The fact that this card doesn't die to a Ritual of Soot or a Cries as well is really awesome. It's like, alright, here's my only creature and it doesn't die to any of my sweepers. God bless. We're kind of at the point in time where we wouldn't mind drawing a, uh... We wouldn't mind, uh, hitting captive audience, huh? Seems... Seems like something we'd be in the market for. This might be enough power that I need to kill the board.
Uh, the widget that I use on stream is a Streamlabs. On screen is a Streamlabs widget. Alright, this means I don't have to pull the trigger on Ritual of Soot just yet. can stem the bleeding a little bit. Between treasure, treasure map and search, we should hit a... Hit what's it called relatively soon, captive audience. So I want to Azkanta before I treasure map, because I would prefer to set up my next draw as opposed to one of my four Azkanta hits. I already have this ritual asset here, so... Uh, yeah, that can stay there, actually. So, we'll go ahead and soot this board. We'll sabotage their play for next turn. And then we'll captive audience the turn after. Huh. Is this actually going to let us win the game? I wonder if between this and Transic Melody, if they give us the zombies to start and draw a couple of merfolk, they might be able to beat five two twos. Wow, they discarded their hand. Okay, seems good for me. Yeah, I agree, Life. Well, we'll find, uh, even if they manage to beat the 2-2s, two a Night Veil Predator, we'll kill them pretty quickly once they get set to 4. Yeah, I feel, I feel like they should have given us 2-2s two here, because, like, they could have been Transing Melodied one of them, or just, like, played, played Tempest Caller out. It is an A-plus animation. You are not wrong. Yeah, I found, I found your list too. You're right, Dr. Grindle. You definitely submitted a list with it. Um, my only thought on this list is that, like, Captive Audience is kind of an afterthought and doesn't really seem like it fits in. Like, you have a bunch of other reasonable win conditions. So, like, why is Captive Audience in that deck? Although it's looking here like we could ask ourselves that same question. It's kind of kind of looking like Captive Audience is not gonna be good enough. We kinda we kinda need a sweeper, right? We need a sweeper this turn. So that way we get our zombies and they're not stonewalled. Is fun an ac acceptable answer? I don't think so in this case. Like, putting putting cards into your deck that are just, like, terrible. Like, building decks around interesting cards is fun to me. But building, 
building, putting cards that are bad into a deck that could otherwise be good, I don't find interesting. Like, don't, don't make, don't make a worse version of something else trying to find a card that's fun. Like, take, take and try and build around and make a card that you find sweet competitive, but like, don't just build a worse version of something else. Like, don't add the card in as an afterthought. Like, Simic Ascendancy is a good example of an afterthought card. So, like, I had a couple people submit Simic Ascendancy build arounds, and I, like, I worked on a bunch of things, and I worked on a bunch of things, and then at the end of the day, the only things I could come up with all were just bad version of Hadana's Climb decks. It's like, well, why why are we trying to put Simic Ascendancy in this deck? It's just worse than Hadana's Climb. And, like, maybe we get done playing this and, like, Captive Audience is just an afterthought here, too. It did it did increase the clock for Night Vale Predator. <laughs> if I If I play this out, it actually gains them life. That's funny. Why not? Sweepers, sweepers one, Merfolk zero. I mean, if you want to be technical, Night Vale Predator won that game. Bring in just all my removals. I'm going to cut my counter spells and just leave Discard to poke through their counter spells. Like, they're definitely going to have counter spells post board, but I think I'd rather just overload on spot removal and sweepers rather than rather than trying to, like, play a cry with the counter spell up. I'd rather just, like, cry and then, like, have another cry next turn. Scriptures fills a role similar to Cry as well as Ritual Soot while offering a secondary way to attack your opponent's graveyard. So it's like kind of reasonable in the face of things like uh, like the Drake's deck and the Sultai deck that's trying to recur things out of their discard pile. This is a pretty easy mulligan. No early cards that impact anything. One of these. London mulligan when, please. London, London Mulligan win, please. The Exile is really good against decks that play Judith. Come at me, little Miss Cloak. Let's do it. Step into my office. Yikes. Got it. Got it. Get it, get it good. Can't block. Might as well attack. Thanks, Manweller. I think there's merit to having different mulligan rules for different formats. Nope. I think any format where the mulligan rule is going to create a problem that format already had a problem in it and it wasn't being addressed i think i think the mulligan rule change is going to highlight problems that already exist in older formats not create ones that didn't that weren't already there Kill that. Since I don't have any sweepers in sight, I might as well just keep using all my point removal every turn. Just make sure we keep the board as clean as possible and keep my health total high. Let's 
So we're really hoping to draw a copy of Chemister's Insight at this point because like I kind of want sweepers but I also want like lands and Chemister's Insight allows me to like generate some actual card advantage. In combos and overlooked problems in older formats, I do. I also don't think that we know that the mulligan rule is going to be a problem in older formats. For any anyone who thinks they know with certainty that the mulligan rule is going to create problems in older formats, you should go read people's opinions about Jace the Mind Sculptor and Bloodbraid Elf in Modern. You need to realize that Magic's a very complex game, and even players who are incredibly experienced have a very difficult time figuring out the impact of things without first-hand experience with those things. You should go you should go read reviews of cards like Snapcaster Mage and Delver of Secrets to see what genuinely good magic players thought those cards would do when they were introduced. I didn't attack there because they could have Merfolk Trickster. Yeah, I think Grixis Control in general tends to struggle in standard because it doesn't have a good way to close games out. And it doesn't have good enough answers to be able to not close games out. I'm going to bin that at this point and just work towards flipping this. Yeah, the, the problem is you're not really a control deck anymore at that point. You're like a Grixis Drakes deck, which is fine. I think Grixis Drakes is probably a great deck to be playing. But that deck is good because it's proactive, not because it's controlling. Ritual is set. All right, well, there's those chemistry's insights I was talking about. I think I need to go ahead and cry here just because my opponent keeping all these merfolk mean that not only are they pressuring me, but they're also able to activate their Kumena more often. For people wondering why I'm not killing this with cast down, that's the thing cast down can't kill. Or the type of thing, I should say. Wow, no. Or if they have a merfolk, they can... Wow, no merfolk there is absurd for us. I would love to transform this, thank you. Do I just jam captive audience? Nah, I probably need to find removal, huh? Alright, fine. For the, for the fans. They're going to discard this land this turn. What a spectacle. I would like the record to reflect I did it for the memes. I would like the record to reflect that we did not make this play because it was good. Yikes. 
Yikes. Well, we've got one one more ritual to set in our deck. Number, number one sign your payoff's probably not good enough. You cast it and you still die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we peaked at 16 today, Manny. We finished at like 200 something, I think. Casual, casual draw to you, no big deal, you know. Uh, we were playing Teamer Domery. Teamer Domery's great. If they have two more, two more folk here, we're dead. We're not using cast down on the deep root elite because the deep root elite is irrelevant because the only way we're winning this game is hitting ritual of soot. So I'm playing to the out of drawing ritual of soot. Yeah, and I wanna I wanna chemistry's insight this turn to give myself the most looks at ritual. Yeah, cards cards like this make me wonder like what was this designed for? Because it doesn't seem like it would be good in multiplayer EDH, and it's almost certainly not good in standard. So like who who was this card designed to like appeal to? Like where it is because like there's a lot of different metrics like is this supposed to be a limited bomb probably not because it's mythic right like mythic mythic rares aren't designed for limited generally right kitchen it could just be a kitchen table card yeah that's fair Four more shots. Four more shots to not die. Not to win, just to not die. All right. Survey says. Oh no. Oh, they have this card plus two activations here for a counter spell. So they get they get two more shots to counter spell, and then like after this ritual of soot resolves, we still have to like not die to them like the four cards in their hand plus these two deep root waters. Just like getting dumpstered by these enchantments. It's just like, well, yikes. Yep. All right, on to game three. See if we can get on get on the scoreboard. If we're just gonna gonna O2 see ourselves out. I think F captive audience is the same level of as ethereal absolution. To set a bar that's low, I think ethereal absolution is better than captive audience. Oh, we could have attacked. <laughs> Chat, this is a control deck. We don't attack. You kill the board or, the, or you lose the game. Come on now. You know, you don't attack. This is a control deck. Where have you been? No, Divine Tez did not make it to the ring queue. 
Did we miss lethal? I think I think they're right that we might have missed lethal. Oh, they had one blocker and they were at four. Hey, Voltaic, thanks for the 27 months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, they, they tapped all their creatures. I just, like, had in my mind, like, we're dead if this doesn't resolve, and it didn't resolve, and I was like, okay, we're dead. We'll go to the next one. Do you have any more decks today that are going to go in the rank queue? No, probably not. I probably shouldn't have even played Bant Fall in the ranked queue. Well, maybe. We'll see. If we stay above 2,000 people, I might run a little bit late. So if the, if the viewer numbers stay good, I'm probably going to stream past Mardu Aristocrats. We'll see where we end up at, though. All right, my opponent has put all of their chips into the center of the table here. Phyrexian, Phyrexian scriptures reminding us that, hey, I am in fact worse than ritual of many places. Milik, thanks for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. No, I don't think the Mardu deck's very good. We've played a lot of iteration of the Mardu deck at this point. It's definitely what I would classify as a fan favorite, but it's too high variance to be consistent. The, the mana base demands just are too much. You just can't cast your spells often enough for it to be good, in my opinion. When you, when you cast your spells, it's very reasonable, but there's too many games you're just like, well, I don't have one of my colors and I'm dead. Scriptures is awkward without an enabler. What do you mean an enabler? Can you, can you define the word for me? What, what card are you saying makes scriptures not awkward? I do like Planeswalker decks. Planeswalker decks are sweet. Always remember, if you have questions about what cards are being played in decks upcoming on the stream, you can find them in the deck queue on my website. Not sure if Burfolk deck is good or if our deck is just bad. We played an iteration of Burfolk on stream and it was kind of middling. Just, it died, it died to sweepers a lot of the time. Although our opponent did beat sweepers last game, so not, not all of the time necessarily, I suppose. Night Veil Predator, probably going to show us here that we should just not be playing Captive Audience and just have real threats in our deck. The Winding Road, doling out the five sub-gifties. Thank you for the support. I hope you're having a good Friday wherever you're at. Welcome, welcome. That's true. The Sweepers technically would have done it last game. I am just not terribly smart or thin. Miriok, thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. Awesome random login. I'm glad you like it. 
Well, thanks for the support. Hope you're having, hope you're having a good start to your weekend. Payday sounds like a great start. Mena here, crack them for seven. We're just getting pretty well set up to race in the air here, right? Especially with Cry and Moment of Craving in our hand. Captive audience is a consistent win condition for its controller. <laughs> Good starter construction decks. The mono blue tempo deck that won the last mythic championship is actually one of the ideal decks in terms of like cost. So I feel like there's a good chance my opponent has a counter spell here. So I'm going to head in moment of craving this Merfolk Mistbinder, hoping they counter spell this, and then next turn my Cry of the Canarium will resolve, hopefully. I ideally. I guess if they have another counterspell, I'm technically dead now. Maybe I should do this pre-combat. Never punished. God bless. Urkadar, thank you for the 21 months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for shipping me your Bezo Bucks again. Yeah, if I, if I cry first, I still hit them for three, which leaves them at six, which means they'd still be dead this turn. So we didn't get punished there, but we could have. Weird Juka, you do have a sub icon next to your name. Maybe maybe Twitch is having some issues. They do that on occasion. They do do that on occasion. All right, one and one. One and one. Let's see if Captive Audience ends up being anything other than a seven mana awkward card. Should be 2-0. Uh, what was the first match? So the first match we lost Baron Square to Esper. We got dumpstered by Esper. My favorite magic card of all time. I have a spell. I have a spell setter sprite that's framed. Li liability. Yeah, that's the one. Sabotage going on. Thought erasure sounds excellent. Yeah, probably Grindle. I guess I just take Thought Erasure because the rest of these cards really don't do anything that I care about. Uh, the FM promo sprite. Why do I like Spellstutter Sprite so much? Because I love crappy cards that play out at instant speed. So, we talked about virtual card advantage with a deck like this earlier. And if you see here, my opponent basically has three removal spells in their hand, which is really good against my... Which is really good for my deck that basically doesn't have any creatures in it. Now, we played Team Rodomri again this morning, and I changed uh, one land in the mana base. Find it on the Stream Decker page. Yoink. When I play this captive audience and they Vivian read it, I'm going to curl up in a little ball and cry.
This is the part of the game where, like, they go to four, and then they draw and play Jade Light Ranger and go back to ten. Thanks for the ad bits, T-Dub. I'm excited to lose after we cast our best after we cast our namesake. Oh no! I liked my treasure map. Best 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 card. We're gonna they're gonna give us zombies next turn, and then they're gonna play Chupacabra and eat one of them. It's not, it's not gonna be a good scene, chat. It's not gonna be a good scene. Zombie, zombie, zombie. Hey, hey. Actually, if they chupacabra here, I. Wait, what? What? Seriously? Alright, deal. Sign me up. Oh no! We might, we might be on track to do it here, chat. We might be, we might be doing it. We might be doing it. Oh, we did it! Our audience was held captive, chat. Our audience was held captive. Sweet memes are made of these. Do 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 do. Um, trim and I failed, trim and I failed. Let's do it. Let's do it. Captive audience was worth every penny of mana, and y'all doubted the namesake card. Come on now. Come on now. Doubted, doubted the raw power of the captive audience. He, he of little faith. He's gotta believe in the meme. The kitchen table carries. Captive audience picked that game up on its back and ran it across the finish line. I don't want none of your lip chat. Don't you, don't you speak ill. Speak ill of our wonder. There's so many new planeswalkers coming. Will every deck be mid-range or control? Nah. It's probably a great time to register spell peers. That's what that's what people keep asking me what's my opinions of a, a set with all the planeswalkers. I think it means it's gonna be a great time to register spell peers. Have you heard of our Lord and Savior Spell Pierce? Maybe I'm supposed to hold up Stroke this turn just in case they had two payoffs. Card that impacts the board here, kind of like, kind of looking for ritual asset. Uh, 
I boarded out my cries, which is a little bit sad. There, there is a one mana planeswalker. It's banned in Legacy. Finest rituals, please. It is banned in modern two. You're not wrong. Yikes. All right. Well, that's why we played the swamp there. We get two, two shots at a ritual. One shot. One opportunity. Dead. Dead. I don't think I want Cry in Moment of Craving. Like, I know they would have been good there, but I think that's kind of an anomaly. I think that's more the, ex the exception than the rule. I wonder if we'll see some interesting one and two mana planeswalkers with with just like one or two abilities like two ability planeswalkers with no ultimate could be something reasonable sure dr grindle relevant magic related links are always welcome in chat They play an explorer creature, it'll probably kill the wild growth walker in response here. Uh, the one mana planeswalker is a joke. There's a card called Deathrite Shaman that's often joked about as being a one mana planeswalker because it has three different abilities. It's a, it's a one mana creature with three activated abilities. And Divination's really good when it comes with a 2 1. That can stay right there so that way we can chemistry's insight and still kill a planeswalker if they if they jam it in the play. You never attack with death right. That's not true. You've never you've you've played death right against rest in peace, Scooter. Card. That card goes goes full squire sometimes. They could probably hammer themselves all the way to four. If they hammer themselves too low and we hit a night veil predator, we could steal the game with that. What if they print like a blue black Tefri? Not every Tefri has to be busted. Giving you a mirror march deck to play. Yeah, we've played mirror. We've lost with mirror march on more than one occasion. Well, well 
If this if this doesn't embody playing Grixis control in a nutshell, I don't know what does really. Means retribution. Meet my newest friend. It, it to set a bar that's low, it turned out better than expected, guard. I think we're dead at this point. Like we can't we can't get captive audience going with Vivian. Like even even if I like I have to answer the Vivian and I have to answer the board, and there's like this hydrate crisis barreling down over the top of us. Just Grixis control things. Packed for Kaya's wrath. Yeah. Whoop whoop. Ooh, look at our uncommons. So this deck really felt like it just had pretty typical blue-black slash Grixis deck problems, which is that these colors just aren't good enough at being a control deck in this format. These colors don't have the tools to allow them to be responsive to the variety of things that are occurring. I think if you want to play blue-black or if you want to play or if you want to play Grixis, you... You need to be more proactive. You need to play something like the Seth Manfield style mid-range list, or you need to play something like Grixis Dragons from my website. You need a way to actually close the game out. So that way, in the games where you can't answer their permanence appropriately, you can just race them, as opposed to just sitting there and dying to the things you can't answer. 